Arif Tov Chavri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We're going to be covering two stories tonight in the first broadcast. Here we'll be talking about uh, the United States' involvement in Venezuela and, of course, that threat of military option on the table that Vice President Mike Pence was speaking about just recently. Uh, we know there were some people that actually in the comments felt that he did not speak of that. But, of course, it's all over the news everywhere about the U.S. Uh, military intervention inside of Venezuela. And I even had one uh, person comment on there that, of course, Russia, Iran, and Hezbollah are all involved inside of Venezuela as well. Now, I can't say so much for Iran and Hezbollah. That may be propaganda, especially when you start to see what really goes on down in this part of the world. Uh, but the one thing we can say, yes, Russia definitely is involved inside of Venezuela. They have been, especially bringing in food aid in light of the fact of the U.S. supporting the opposition there to overthrow the government, something the U.S. has done well, for a number of years, as we can, we'll soon see here. Anyway, in this article right here on globalresearch.ca, UN chief warns over U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has stressed that Latin American countries must be safeguarded from the foreign intervention after U.S. President Donald Trump threatened military action in Venezuela. So, yes, indeed, the U.S. president has, and of course, the vice president backing up what President Trump may possibly do is a military intervention. And of course, it's a long history of that with the United States. It's not like President Trump or President, Vice President Pence or, or, or some kind of bad guys that we would just like to throw under the bus. It has nothing to do with that. The point is, is that this is a new world order. And of course, the video that we play just a small clip of when Vice President Pence does mention uh, the, uh, a new world, he is clearly speaking about a new world order. He's not talking about something of the new Americas many, many years ago or nothing like that. It is a new world order. That's something you might want to catch on our next broadcast coming out right after this one here. Uh, very interesting, very enlightening article there. Also, the Russian insider uh, br brought up this same issue here in an article here. Trump CIA director U.S. must counter Russian Iran and Hezbollah in Venezuela. Uh, this is exactly what the CIA director Mike Pompeo claimed Venezuela is overrun with Iranians, Hezbollah, Cubans, and Russians. In response to the question about Donald Trump's statement about U.S. military intervention, Pompeo appeared on Fox News Sunday where he responded to comments made by President Donald Trump on Friday in which he said there was a possible military option for Venezuela. So there is a possible Venezuela, and of course what's being told in the mainstream media is that the reason for this is because to stop the influence of, of course, Russia, Iran, and Hezbollah. Well, I guess they're just traveling all over the world causing problems. ISIS definitely is traveling all over the world causing problems, and of course that was created by U.S. government, and no doubt a few other governments in the world there to help pull that together, including that of the Saudis, and of course Qatar, Turkey, etc. to help form ISIS, and they are definitely bringing about a destabilization around the world. But the question is, is Venezuela, this part of the Middle East, etc., what all can we really look at that? Well, pictured on the screen and behind me now happens to be John Stockwell. He's a former director of operations of the CIA. He also served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, he served in the Vietnam War. He was stationed in uh, CIA in Nicaragua. Throughout Central America, America he was involved in different uh, covert operations by, by the CIA. He was also uh, working in the CIA when President, uh, uh, former President Bush was actually the director of the CIA. And so I want to play for you a couple of clips here where he speaks about those things that are going on in there. So let me just kind of make sure we got a volume up here so you can actually hear this because it's very interesting some of the things that John Stockwell has to say. Listen to this here. By about the same amount of $2 trillion, the United States still has an open policy of supporting coups and destabilizations and low intensity conflicts in every corner of the, the globe, the U.S. doing this through the CIA, uh, my old organization. And as you all well know, our society is said to be drowning in a sea of drugs. And integral to all of this is the systematic destruction of our environment. And it's my thesis that these subjects interrelate. Drug trafficking, the arms race, conventional wars, the destruction of the environment, 
and the killing of the United States president in 1963. And the now, I think one thing that's very interesting in this, just this little brief clip, you're going to want to see this. We'll have the link in the description below here with John Stockwell speaking here. Uh, he mentions climate change, the, 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 the destruction of even the climate. And he talks about drug wars, the drug trade, all these different things. He, all this, he says this, he believes is all working together. This is back in 1989. And now we have the, of course, the big issue about climate, global climate change and the dangers of this. Seems like it's been part of the agenda all along. Let me move over to verse, that, or not verse, but uh, uh, around the 27 minute mark here. I want to play a little bit more clip here for you here and one other place we'll look at. For people in the Contra program, including Adolfo Calero's brother in law, caught smuggling cocaine into this country using the national security uh, shield or passes, using telephone numbers from the past, from the, from the White House to get themselves cleared when FBI or DEA officers would come down on them. We claim the Sandinistas were responsible for terrorism in, in, in Central America. And this case, of course, has never been made. Meanwhile, however, the United States has been supporting, with literally billions of dollars, the activities of death squads that were slaughtering people brutally in countries like El Salvador and Guatemala. And we've been blaming the Sandinistas for the misery in Nicaragua. And the country is miserable. They say no high. We don't have everything. There are shortages of everything. The country is suffering. But U.S. representatives go down there and have a look and come back and go on television and say, you won't believe the place. It's the most miserable country I've ever visited. The Sandinistas have not been able to manage it. Look what happens when you have a Marxist government. To be honest, obviously, they would go down and say, our stated purpose back since 1982 was to break the Nicaraguan economy. We spent a billion dollars destabilizing the country to break its economy. Now, here are my snapshots of the results of our successful program to break their economy. Of course, they don't do that because they're playing propaganda, because they're not being honest. The country is miserable. It's not the fault of the Sandinistas. It was the purpose of our Contra program. Now, John Stockwell does get into Venezuela as well, but I just want to give you a little example there. And there is another spot here I wanted to share with you as well. I'm hoping I can remember the exact right place it was at. I think it's at the 57 minute mark here. Just to kind of give you a little bit of idea of what the CIA is involved in around the world and all the evils that our government has been doing in the name of democracy. I definitely don't agree with communism, and please understand, I am definitely not for communism whatsoever. But the point is, pot can't call kettle black when we do some of the most hideous things that we claim other countries are doing. Listen to this as well. Them. Bush's policies were not to find out the truth and punish the perpetrators and clean up the CIA. It was to cover for us. He went to the congressional committees and said, I wasn't here. But these nice people, I mean, he's a very nice person, by the way. He would walk down the hall shaking our hands saying, hello, I'm George Bush, and I want you to know I love being here working with all these fine people in the CIA. And we were saying, huh? I mean, this is the CIA director who's supposed to have kind of an aura, you know. And, but he was going to the Congress saying, I can't believe that these nice people out there would do the things that you're alleging, but I'll check. And then he had... But, and then he had a young attorney sent down to my office to go through my files to purge them of documents that would prove exactly what they were accusing us of. And then he went back to them and said, we've checked, there are no files in the agency that, that prove anything like you're alleging, therefore you can drop it, and they did. And That's exactly what our government does. It is amazing to see these types of things that are going on. And of course, so when we hear about uh, the U.S. involvement in Venezuela, talking about possibly doing a military operation, I believe the reason for the military operation at this point in time is because the, the uh, supporting the opposition and trying to destroy the government and the country through an opposition and rebellion from within, much like what happened in Ukraine, 
has not been fully successful. And now that Russia is starting to send in uh, uh, aid into the country here, such as we see around Del Sur 12th anniversary, uh, Russia helps Venezuela fight the opposition's economic war. Uh, this is what's causing the problem for the United States is that Russia is stepping in now in Venezuela as they did also uh, in Syria. And the United States cannot afford to lose Venezuela. Why? Because Venezuela is extremely rich in oil and natural resources, just like Syria is. And it's one reason why article that came out today saying the United States is planning on being in Syria decades after this war ends. Uh, and of course, helping to establish Kurdistan for the Kurdish people, whom I do uh, admire the, the resolve of the Kurdish people and the equality of the women and the fighting and the, and the equal rights that they believe in. But the point is, is the U.S. government is using the Kurdish people only to be able to gain the, uh, uh, the access to the natural reserves that are inside of Syria. And this is what's happening also in Venezuela. And yes, of course, Russia has always had ties uh, with Venezuela for, for no doubt with decades. I know that now they're trying to also establish uh, uh, companies that will be building part of the military vehicles uh, that they use inside of Russia. That was part of the agreement uh, with this food aid package that they had uh, brought in to the Venezuelan people. But it is the, the food aid that is actually giving these people some relief. As it says, Venezuelan Minister for External Commerce and in, uh, International Trade, Jesus Faria, thanked Russia Monday for helping the country fight against its food crisis, which he said is being exploited by the country's right-wing opposition. Russia has been providing Venezuela with wheat deliveries as part of a development program signed in May. Under the agreement, Russia agreed to send Venezuela 60,000 tons of wheat per month. According to Faria, these wheat deliveries have provided a crucial lifeline ensuring that the Venezuelan people have access to the basic food staples. And this is why the U.S. is now looking at doing a military intervention, because Russia once again has stepped in the way. And this is something that they can't have happen. I also ran across this article here as well. I thought it was very interesting. This is from uh, uh, covertgeopolitics.co. Uh, you can look this up, Deep State, Dirty Hands on Venezuela Exposed. Russia intervenes, intervenes with food aid. And of course, they go into the deep state of the United States that's behind all of this. So if you really have a love and a heart for President Trump, maybe he's not aware of that because once again, it is the deep state, as they say here, wants to introduce democracy in Venezuela through political sanctions, financial system hacking, and religious war due to the country's refusal to surrender control of its vast energy resources to the Wall Street bankers. Uh, maybe I should blow that up on the screen here for you so you can really get a good look for yourself. I don't want you to think I'm just making this up here. Uh, so uh, let's just get this plenty big enough for everybody to be able to see. Let's go a little bit bigger because what I'm going to share with you also in this article is going to be a shocker to you. All right. If we go down in the article here a little ways further, um, let me just find the actual place here. And... I think it's right after this here. Venezuela President Nicolas uh, Maduro announced Saturday the arrest of those responsible for the banking system sabotage that saw the national, uh, nation's electronic payment system collapse in the country on Friday. That's not the one. I'm going to have to back it down just long enough for me to find that place. And here we go. It should be right in here. Uh, yes, this, is, this was what was the shocker is to see that this was actually brought out uh, in this article as well. Uh, let's pick it up right here. While this formula of hybrid geopolitical interventions is familiar to all the advanced readers of this site, most of the people in the Americas have yet to understand the hidden agenda which motivated the leaders behind the mass actions which complements the power of Western propaganda which fueled color revolutions in many parts of the world and within the United States too. As typical in any religious countries, Vatican embedded agents has also tried to do their part instigating right, uh, rift right at the core of the Venezuelan society. The Catholic priests unleashed their anti-Maduro propaganda to solicit an aggressive response from his diehard supporters. Interesting, isn't it? So it seems that Rome has their hand in the cookie jar pretty much everywhere destruction comes. I think that has a lot to do with the 
uh, translation that we shared with you on Daniel chapter 11 verse 31 about the abomination that makes desolation brings about destruction throughout a 2,000 year period after they wounded, boring him through the Holy One the Messiah himself, and replaced him instead with the abomination that would become nothing but a destroyer, bringing about desolation throughout the years following after Yeshua left this earth. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tune in a little bit later. A very interesting broadcast, something I don't think anyone's ever picked up on as of yet. Shalom.